but I gotta ask you about it, Dave Landau, because you just mentioned his name. Uh, for, for the record, can I, plug, I, can I plug a documentary that the guy made about me? Porcelain made a document before I forget. Yeah, English person Porcelain made this documentary. It's on his YouTube, youtube.com, Porcelain, P O R S A L I N. He's done a lot of great documentaries. And, and if- uh, and if you want a better uh, Kevin Brennan interview than this, also check out that channel. There's like a two hour long interview that Kevin did with English yeah. person porcelain. Yeah. I hope England dies. But uh, as we were saying, you mentioned the name Dave Landau, and I've interviewed him a few times. I like him. I think he's funny. But it seems like you used to, from the fucking beginning, had a genuine feud. That, like they're almost literally get physical at one point. Uh, can you tell me about what the fuck started the issue between you and uh, what's your reaction to this thing with Crowder? Because it seems like, uh, well, according to online rumors, so put as much into that as you want, Crowder's losing a shit ton of money every day now that YouTube took away his uh, monetization, which means that he's going to have to start making cuts so there's maybe the chance that Landau may get fired by Crowder, which I hope doesn't happen because he's, I'm just saying, but tell us about the feud and the, uh, the latest on Dave. Wait. So the, the Crowder thing is uh, where he's demonetized. He's they, they demonetized them on YouTube forever or just for a suspension. Uh, apparently it's forever. For what did he do? It's just because just the fact that he's not a fucking left wing. They, yeah, they what think. Did he do? What did he do? You don't get fired for not being a left wing. So what did he do? I think it was some sort of sketch, some uh, sort of edgy comedy. He must have said the word tits or whatever. So they so. So this is facts or these are rumors that you're hearing that he's losing money. Well, it's the fact that he's losing money because without that monetization, like that's a shit ton of ad revenue that's gone. Yeah, but doesn't he still get paid by Blaze TV? Uh, yes, but uh, that that would be uh, over the... Uh, but that's without all the, the YouTube money, which is probably... Te- it's just got to be tens of thousands per month. Okay. Um all right, so yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I thought it was a scam. I thought I thought what Crowder was doing was a scam to get people to pay attention to him. I didn't know. I don't know what what what's what. So, um, so the Dave Lana thing is basically that. Uh, I mean, part of it was that I wanted to. Uh, I guess what year was that? Twenty eighteen. I'd been there. I'd been in Comia for less than a year, and I, I basically had had it. Uh, they already they hired Artie Lang, who was a disaster. Uh, and then um, I was on Jim and Sam on on uh, Sirius Satellite Radio out of New York, and they were, you know, I was just I was basically saying what was wrong with the network because I I had quit, you know, I quit on like a Monday, and then they had me on a Tuesday. And I was basically saying what was wrong with the network. And, uh, you know, and I mentioned Dave Lando. I just said nobody knows who Dave Lando is. And that's, a, that's, that's not me imagining it. In, in New York, nobody knew who Dave Lando was. No one had, had ever heard of him. Even after he got there, even if he worked there for a couple of years, still no one had ever heard of him. He, he didn't work any of the clubs. You know, he can say he he worked the road or whatever. I never saw him at any clubs. I work most of the better clubs in the city, like the Comedy Cellar or the Stand or, you know, I don't work Gotham. Maybe he works Gotham. I don't know. So um, I just said nobody ever heard of him. And he was because uh, uh, at one point, Artie was like in jail or something for for like four weeks or something or he was in rehab. So they had all these these. Uh, co-host filling in for Artie so you know they, and I was bitching about that I go why would they put Ron Bennington I go why would you put Ron why don't you just put people who work there so they can you can help promote our shows instead of getting Ron Bennington and getting outsiders and then they got Dave Landa do a week and I was like Dave Landa no one's ever heard of Dave Landa and that's when Keith the cop called in and he was like 
you know, uh, Kumia really likes Dave Landon. At that point, I didn't care. I didn't care what happened to me. I was making $250 a week there. So it didn't, it, I didn't care. I didn't give a fuck either way. I was like, good, then hire Dave Lando, you know? So, uh, and they, I guess Dave Lando, you know, got pissed. I, again, I didn't care. And so Jim and Sam brought us in like a month later to like, to hash things out or whatever. And I was like, all right, I'll play along. I don't give a fuck, you know? So then, and then Dave Lando took it seriously. Cause I, I think he thought he was like, Dave Lando thinks he's like real, real super great. Like he just thinks he's a super great guy, super funny. That's how he, I'm not saying that's what he is. I'm saying that's how, that's how he perceives himself as a super funny, great guy. So it's like, all right, well, and like I said, on the interview with Porcelain, like I have nothing against, uh, you know, like I'm not going to say the guys, I don't know about the guy, how funny or not funny he is. Cause I mean, I've seen his stand up once. It wasn't spectacular. And then I've, I've, I've been on the show. I, I think I, I know I've done a show before Dave Landa was even like hired at Compound Media. And I think I was on a show with me, Kumia and Lando and Lando doesn't, I just thought he didn't really talk very much. So I was like, I wasn't, I just, I, I, he, I wasn't, I, I was just never like blown away by the guy, I guess, you know, and then everybody was saying how great he was. And, and like I said, in the interview with Portson, I, it, it wasn't like I was, I wouldn't say, I, it's not like I was saying he sucked. I'm just saying great compared to who, I mean, I, you know, whatever, like you brought up Nick DiPaolo. I basically when Boston comedy club opened in New York city, I was emceeing a lot and most, and you know, Louis CK was doing a lot of spots there and Dave Chappelle and Nick DiPaolo and Dave Attell. So it's like, this is, this is who I, this is who I basically started with in New York. So is Dave Lando in that is, is, is so, so people throw around the, the, the term great, or, you know, he's a great comics. Like Dave Lando is not a great comic. I mean, he might be a great comic, if you're talking about middles or Midwestern comedy or, but for like in the, in the grand scheme of things, he's not a great comic. So I, you know, I, I never bought the fucking, all the, all the compound media bullshit about him, like how great he is and how great he is with, with Kumia. I've done shows with Kumia many times. It's, it's not, it's not hard to be good with Kumia because Kumia is good. So he makes everybody around him look good. So it's not complicated, but you know, the fans were like, Oh, Dave's a great guy. And he's, he's hilarious. And it's like, okay, I've never seen it. I've never seen his hilarity, but you know, and then I didn't, you know, I didn't watch the, I didn't watch his show with, with Lando. I mean, with Kumia, but you know, I've, I've been on shows with him and I, I was never, I would have noticed if he was great. I would have noticed. I've got to say though, but when it came to him, uh, at announcing that he's left from the Kumia show, your your dislike for him seemed to really really ramp it up, and uh, I, like this is not meant to be rude to you, but it, it came across that uh, it seemed like you were angry at the fact that he was getting this uh, new job for with a higher paying uh, right wing guy. What? Yeah, Crowder. He's a, he's one of them. Yeah, so so what? You, I was mad about what? No, I'm saying that, that it it seemed like you didn't like the fact that he had uh, this new job at Crowder. Yeah, why do you say that? No, I'm just saying that's that's the way it seemed based on like. No, uh, who? Did, how, why did it seem like that way to you? Because the exact opposite is true. Why do you? Why did I seem like not happy? I was but, thrilled. I was thrilled that he left Compound Media. <laughs> I, when I went on when I went on Kumia the day after he left, I was I, I was saying, did you not watch that episode? I, I was it's on YouTube. I was I'm thrilled that he left. So I, why are you saying I was mad that he? I don't understand. No, I, I just mean because it kind of it kind of seemed that way a bit. But I'm, I'm not. What's what seemed? What do you say? I, I explain yourself. I, I'm confused. No, I, mean, I I just thought that uh, I thought that the fact that he left. And the, because I listened to your show, Misery Loves Company, which, by the way, has a great Patreon. Everyone should go donate to. What's the address of the Patreon? Patreon, uh, uh, Patreon MLC Podcast. Yeah, oh, yes. Or go to my Twitter. But the link's on my Twitter, Kevin Brennan 666 at Twitter. 
So wait, what? So I don't understand why you thought I was mad that he went to Crowder. Yeah, not so much. Uh, I don't think you were like angry that he left, but I think it, it was the fact that he was going on to a bigger thing. It just seemed that it, it uh, pissed you off. No, you're not very smart. It, no, it, it, no. So when it, when I I was thrilled that he left. I thought the way he left was typical Landau, like gutless, uh, underhanded. He quit in a fucking email to Kumia. He didn't tell him in person. He didn't call him on the phone. He quit the most cowardly way you can through an email. Because emails, the if you're a coward, it's 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 the greatest thing because you don't have to. You just send so many email, and then they get it when they get it. They see it when they see it. It's not like a text. Or a phone call. They, if you text somebody, it pops up right away. If you DM somebody, it might pop up right away. But an email does not pop up. So you might see email three hours after you got it. Kumia said he saw it on Sunday. And Lando, I guess, sent it on Friday. So again, it, it, maybe that's his technique. I'll send it on Friday. Uh, Kumia might not see it for days. I won't have to deal with it. I just thought it, I just thought it was typical Lando, underhanded, uh, you know, gutless i'm just not a fan of the guy but i i was was i mad that he went to crowd i was thrilled i was thrilled that he was out of new york and i never have to fucking see him again so i don't know i don't know how you interpret that as i was i was mad that he went to crowder the exact opposite i will accept my uh, wrongness as usual but uh behind the scenes uh was anthony did he say anything about dave after you left or is anthony just like Fuck it upwards and onwards. No, he said what he said when I was on when I was on the show with him, he basically said what you know, I asked him. I didn't think anybody else was gonna ask him. So he said, No, he just he said what I just said to you. He quit through an email. He quit on a sat a Friday, I guess. He sent me an email on Friday. Uh Kumia didn't see it till Sunday. So he was kind of, you know, I guess he's you know, I guess he smelled trouble. And so he wasn't probably wasn't completely surprised but he was still like it, it was i'm sure it was a surprise that he got it through an email that he quit so so kumi was not happy and then he then kumi went on bobby kelly's show with landau bobby kelly uh, got him together and of course bobby did a horrific interview with them together he he got he, did, he got to the bottom of nothing uh he basically tried to make those guys uh you know make some make peace but it's like uh, the point was Kumia was not happy. I mean, Kumia is pretty a straightforward guy. When I was talking to him before, before I went on a show that day, he was saying he, you know, basically was like, like, you know, yeah, he just fucking he was not he was not thrilled with the way it went down. And then when he was on the show with me, he was saying he was wasn't thrilled with the way it went down. And then he was saying Kumia was saying, well, you know, it's a business. I'm like, it's not a business. It's not. It's you guys are friends. He stayed at your house. You guys were did fucking three years together, whatever it was. And uh, so, you know, you can say it's a business, you know, but but that was more there was more a personal situation than business situation. Uh, are, you, are you trying to say you didn't find it hilarious when Bob Kelly made uh, Italian kitchen jokes to Anthony Cumia? I mean, that's that's really Bobby's downfall because he's it, Bobby. Bobby's funny. He's a funny comic, but he's just he, he's, he goes for the like. Be like me making fun of the the blinds behind you for an hour. Don't you know? I mean, it's like at some point, it's like first of all, they're not funny. So to Bobby to make fun of Kumia chandeliers, yeah, like on and on and on. I was like, Bobby just doesn't know how to do this. Bobby, Bobby is basically not good at podcasting, and part of it is because of that. Because he goes for the like the the low hanging fruit, as they say. And that works in stand up, but in podcasting, it's just, it doesn't work. The phony you went for fruit in real life. But huh? I got to ask you about a, another comedian that you seem to have a feud with. Did that just hit? Did I get one laugh? I don't know. I know I was laughing at the fact that I didn't, I don't know what she said. Uh, I was laughing at the fact that it probably was a joke and I didn't hear it. Uh, even if you did hear I it. I don't even care. I don't even, I don't even <laughs> care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Like but if I, I laugh at your joke, it doesn't matter. It's just it's life goes on either way, right? No, it, it matters to me. A laugh if you get a laugh or don't get a laugh, it doesn't matter. It's just one joke in a big picture. In the big picture, no, I Go kill ahead. myself tonight. But uh, I, gotta ask I would love it if you killed yourself because then I would get a lot of attention 
and my Patreon and YouTube numbers would spike. There you go. I'll claim a girl. I had a girl on yesterday who saw her, her co host killed herself. When doing, they were doing a podcast, and I said, "Your numbers went up." She goes, "Yeah, they went up. Well, they went way up. So, you know, temporarily. Then you got to sustain it." 